Quite the intro I was expecting. How about you? No? Aren't you glad you tuned in? What, what tuning would be involved in this? This is a terrible launch for a podcast. This is Binary Jazz. We're 45 seconds in. We're finally saying this, the name of the show. I just said before I, we started recording that I'm frazzled today, and I think that it's already evident. Uh, Binary Jazz, a podcast. I'm, I'm still podcast. trying to figure out what tuning would be involved in a podcast. I don't know. I mean, I think of tuning like a yeah. You know, I play guitar, and I used to have, like, a standalone oh. tuner. Yeah. But now the, the app on my phone is so much better than the tuner I ever had as a standalone device. At some point, does, the, like, the phone replace the guitar itself? Can you just strum your phone? <laughs> I guess you'd need two, wouldn't you? But, like, one really long phone? <laughs> I, don't well, think, I don't think, I don't think your, your phone could replace a guitar. Your phone can currently replace a keyboard. Because there are apps. Computer or, or computer? computer, or computer. Uh, no, I mean like I, what? synthesizer keyboard. Yeah. 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 Um, so this show is about nothing. Um, Obviously. And Allison gives us a topic and then it's still about nothing as Chris and I dance are not um, talking about a topic. Uh, and then we close with questions. That's kind of a synopsis of the show. Um, Allison is the... Uh, uh, the person that brings the topics. She is also a um, <laughs> microphone um, salesperson for the uh, high quality uh, uh, podcasting microphones manufactured in Canada. Um, and Chris, of course, um, we all got to, became, became uh, friends through the process of uh, microphone sales conventions. Uh, Chris, of course, um, manufactures microphone salesman, salesperson uh, carrying bags. Um, so you can put your microphones on each side. You pull up and they knock on a door to demo your microphones, and there you have it. Uh, <laughs> and I make microphone cables. Allison is Allison Plus on the internet. Chris, I always get your name wrong because of this show. Um, <laughs> really, it's jazz sequence on the internet, but uh, that might be the first time I've gotten it right in 10,000. Episodes, ten thousand ten. Is this ten thousand ten today? This is ten thousand eleven. Okay, I must have missed ten thousand and ten, which is rare. It's so it's, it's very very rare that we have sequential numbers like that, isn't it? It's true. And who who are you on the internet? Oh, uh, binary Gary. <laughs> and I got that right. <laughs> collectively, we are a binary jazz on the internet. Yeah. Although, yes. honestly, maybe we should change it to binary jazz plus. Uh, because, because I mean, binary jazz is obviously a combination of binary Gary and jazz sequence, and that's the name of the show. But but we have a plus, binary jazz plus would just make sense. That's clever, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It only took us ten thousand episodes. To it hear. did. It only took us ten thousand episodes to realize that we slow. that we <laughs> named the show incorrectly. Well, I I. I was not a part of this. <laughs> From this. I think the Twitter archives show differently. <laughs> I, was, I was a part of it, but I wasn't. I, I, I was a, a hapless bystander, uh, really. Yes. Enthralled in the tornado. I, fully enthralled hapless. In the, tornado, the tornado that is. I had a reminder in Slack to send Chris the gif of Fry Mooning. Like once a month, I would get a reminder in Slack to moon Chris. On oh, is that what it was? <laughs> well, it started out, I, I ran into something and thought I should send you that GIF. And your reaction was so wonderful. I said, well, I need to make this a recurring thing because I enjoyed it so much. And it created <laughs> such an interesting interaction. But then it became a thing. And it was probably after the fifth or sixth time when, when we had a conversation, decided to start talking. So for half a year, I was mooning you on Twitter. Just because I missed you. <laughs> wow. See, I thought I thought you I thought that what triggered it was you you would habitually come across my really bad code, 
And every time you came across my bad code, you're like, oh, this is Chris <laughs> Moon. <laughs> I think the first time, it wasn't even code the first time. It was like we came across like a uh, strategy, strategy decision um, that I think I misunderstood. I don't know. It, <laughs> in any case, you weren't there. So of course you were the guy that got the blame, right? So yeah. the first time it happened, that's and then fair. as a result of the interaction on Twitter, I decided that it should be a recurring thing. Like, what do I use Twitter for? Moon and Chris seems like a good, good use of Twitter. And it's a pretty short list right now. <laughs> what is Twitter good for? That's, that's, that's high up there. Yeah. It's also good for users to submit questions. So feel free to tweet at us. That's at true. It may look like someone is like focused today. It may look like Prepare. our Twitter account is is unoccupied and only auto tweets when we have a new episode, but that is incorrect. We're here on standby, waiting. We're here on standby, just waiting for some sort of interaction. <laughs> there, um, uh, this is this is the second episode we've recorded while World Cup is going on. Correct? Um, or no? This is no, the first, first. episode recorded. It's the first. Oh. I would I like to point out that we are six minutes in with no soccer talk. I was doing it out of respect for you, Gary. I yeah. I was <laughs> gonna. I was gonna you actually talk about Germany. If you want, <laughs> I don't. I I think I feel like I missed something with Germany, and I don't know what it was. Germany. They've won been the, eliminated. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and they won. They, last year. Oh wait, wait, wait! Time out! Time out! Uh, 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 spoiler alert! If you're listening to this podcast, well, <laughs> at the time this one comes out, though, if people are if people not are early new news. news. <laughs> People are saving been, the games that long at that point, and I wait. It, does this does this episode come out tomorrow? I, this is no. Really this episode comes out next stuff, week. No, this oh. one will come out next week. So yeah. at that yeah, point, right. if they're not up on the World Cup by it's... by this point next week or next week this or yes. whenever in a week. Yeah, you should you should know that. Which which really the saddest part about Germany being eliminated <clears throat> was that when they won the World Cup in 2014, there is this amazing gift of Mueller dancing in a nightclub, uh, doing this sort of like uh, Gangnam style kind of dance. Um, and it was, it was the most charming and amazing thing that came out of the entire World Cup. And the fact that it will not be repeated this year makes me sad. Well, and it won't be repeated this year, obviously, because Mueller is, is busy in DC and not playing soccer, so. <laughs> Same guy. Dif I would different, that. different, different Mueller. This is Mueller with a umlau, I believe. Uh, still a double L? No. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, definitely getting off to a good start. I was, yeah, I was gonna mention that we're in the middle of the World Cup, but I now I did apparently. So <laughs> you're like, I'm not gonna let anything <laughs> no. stop me. <laughs> One way I know we're in the middle of the World Cup is because I can hear cheering in my neighborhood when certain teams play. Yeah, and you, you've talked before about being in sort of a multicultural neighborhood. So is it like just like constantly on all sides at different times? That's... It's like, well, because so when Poland plays, that's a pretty big deal in my neighborhood. Um, and I'm curious to know what, like how it'll develop, like if, what fallback teams will there be? at some point um but yeah portugal is a big deal there's lots of horn honking <laughs> for portugal for brazil for poland um so i don't think there's yeah. any games currently being played so there yeah won't be the games are done well are they done for the day no i think, I think there might be another round at two but i don't think yeah. there's anybody that my neighborhood will be invested in <laughs> <laughs> but uh I'm I'm, not I'm, actually, I'm not actually like really in the thick of it i'm like a a few blocks away from bars and things. So it's pretty funny that I can still hear when someone scores. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking yesterday, because we went to um, the Utah Royals, the, the NWSL team here. Uh, we, they played last night. And so as we were uh, driving to or from, I was, I was thinking about what you said about your neighborhood being uh, multicultural and, and World Cup being a big thing. And, and thinking about how it's not at all a big thing here and wishing that it kind of was, because it would kind of be nice to have people kind of coming out of the woodwork and, and celebrating their teams. And it just doesn't sound a thing. Yeah. Obviously, though, <clears throat> your company Slack has to be pretty 
pretty crazy about World Cup. Yeah, then. we we have a separate we have a we have a newly created sports channel, the sort of a general sports channel, and basically all the talk in the sports channel currently is World Cup, and we have a internal uh, bracket that we uh, are doing uh for well not really a bracket but like you, it's a prediction thing and it does have a bracket component um that we're doing that has about uh, not quite 20 people i think doing it so how are you doing uh, in that uh i was last i was third and then i dropped to fourth or fifth but i'm not doing as bad as i could be doing um especially considering i don't watch most of these teams so i'm yeah. literally basing all my predictions on like reputation and like kind of vague knowledge of the area geographically and what I think of their sports programs. Um, yeah. That was my approach and I'm getting throttled in ours. <laughs> Apparently I, there are 12 people playing on number 10. So I, I'm not the worst, but to be well, fair, like the number 12 spot, the person that's going for 12 wanted the, the loser's prize. So I'm really like 10 out of 11. I will um, there, there barely is a, holding that spot down. There was a bonus section that had where you could make predictions about who's going to advance in the groups, who's going to win the the whole thing, and all that sort of stuff. And I did predict uh, Germany to win the whole thing. Um, Whoops. Yeah. So I'm not going to get that bonus point. Um, but yeah. I don't feel so bad because Landon Donovan uh, tweeted yesterday that he also predicted Germany would win the the whole thing. So if if Landon Donovan also got that wrong, then I feel like I'm in good company. Sadly, you're not in a pool with Landon Donovan. So. Yes, yeah, sadly, I'm not in a pool with Landon Donovan for a variety of reasons. For so many reasons. Right. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, clearly. Um, so, hey, what's our topic today? Oh, yeah. It's, it's not the World bubble. Cup. That's not it's the topic. It's Landon Donovan. <laughs> Whoa. My mind is blown. Uh, no, uh, the topic today is, although it would be really funny just to have an episode dedicated to, maybe that'll be. Obscure soccer like trivia or something, yeah. Just a person. Just just that oh. episode, just that picture of Landon Donovan drinking from a water fountain. An entire <laughs> episode about that picture. Just dissecting it. <laughs> Why was he so thirsty? Um, <laughs> Why does he look like he's trying to seduce me? Yeah. What? Gary's like, what, what is this picture about? you're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> We'll try to Yeah, but I'm okay shifting the episode if that's where we're going. <laughs> try to Should I Google this right now? In the show notes. Probably. Right Landon, yeah, Landon Donovan, Donovan Water Fountain. It's probably from it's probably from oh. uh yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Binary jazz, interrupting your Google searching history. <laughs> Disrupting your <laughs> analytics sense. Yeah. What is going on there? Experience. Um, <laughs> this week's topic is domestique. Domestique. Mm -hmm. Those are the D O M E S T I Q U E. So, so this is obviously in preparation for the Tour de France, right? And domestiques are the no. Hear me out on this. I know. This. <laughs> I'm more. I'm actually. I'm on lockdown. My face dropped. I'm like concerned. <laughs> These are the folks, um, and their job is to be like the water and food runners for. The team lead, so they are world class cyclists. That, I used to watch. Do you remember? Um, there was this guy, uh, American cyclist named Lance Armstrong, right? Um, I saw. I was a big Lance Armstrong fan. I loved watching the Tour de France. I mean, I never missed it for uh, eight, like drug addled years. Apparently, I was <laughs> drug addled. He was. Um, yeah. Well, and then there was there was Floyd Landis the year that when like shortly after Lance left and then Lance made his big return and um yeah so the domestique's job is to um function as support for the rider that, it, that is expected to win um on their team or has the best chance of winning although some teams approach it with two riders and they see who fares the best after the first stage in the mountains which is either the Alps or the Pyrenees and then depending which direction they're going to the country yeah okay so I'm going to so, shift the topic to uh two possibilities uh, that it is obviously not because you already know what it is. And we're going to pretend that one or both of these things are the actual thing that it is. So either it is a French dominatrix, domestique. Yeah. 
or it is uh, the d like domestic help, like your 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 ingr your indentured servants. It, a very a proper like formal uh, instead of, instead of saying I have indentured service, you say I have domestiques. <laughs> that that softens it. Yes, yeah, yeah, softens <laughs> it quite a bit. Yeah, the class so, difference. <laughs> so what I wonder is is this role uh, specific to like like cycling stage races or or does it exist elsewhere in the world like. Like is a is a caddy for a golfer considered a domestique? Oh. Or is the is it definition a, so, very specific to cycling? Yeah, so 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 the question is, is it a category of roles or is it a like for a general uh thing versus a right. particular role for a particular thing? Right. Is it like the same thing as saying like third baseman? Like that's specific to the sport of baseball. Whereas like I can't think of a position that would be general. <laughs> Outfield. Um, Outfield, yeah, out, there you. Go. There or you infield, go. Yep. or just field player. Sure. Is that a thing in baseball? Now I'm, I'm, I'm like my. <laughs> <laughs> when was the strike? The baseball strike was '89. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that was it. That was the end of baseball for me. It was. It was the end of baseball. <laughs> it it was, broke no, baseball. It was, I mean, I loved baseball. I lived yep. and breathed baseball until the strike, yep. and then I don't know. Just. Yep. I. I'm. Yeah. Me too. I got into alternative sports, like cycling, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> I shunned I shunned pretty much all sports um, after, so, after that. So Chris, did you not like get did you not get caught up in the like the like, apparently not, like the whole like uh, Tour de France Lance return? Nope. No. Man. Straight to Tour de France. We were really <laughs> it's I think it is as beautiful a sport as, as soccer ever is. I mean it really it's it's an amazing sport to watch. Um, and the strategy that plays into it over multiple days, it's neat. It, you, should, you should give it a chance. Pick, pick some random team. Um, it starts in just a few days, correct? Or did it already start? Um, I think it starts beginning of July, yeah. Because it overlaps with World Cup quite a bit. And we'll have some, some overlap happening in my household. <laughs> we'll have early mornings and many and late. It's like a lot. That's, that's the best part of the Tour de France is that it's, it, it – by nature, it happens mostly in France. Um, so, <laughs> it's true. Well, they, really, <laughs> mostly they they do they cycling. will do a stage outside or stage or uh, two or three stages outside, usually ever, near the beginning. Ever so briefly. Yeah, yeah, and then and then it's always a big deal, like like regionally in France, like where they where the border is and the celebration and the flags and um, and it and always um, the steel day always happens during the race, correct? And that's always a big celebration and. Um, I feel like maybe it doesn't happen as often as I think, but I feel like the Frenchman usually wins on the steel day they um, or it's happened several times. I think they almost always let them win that, that let day. Let the break stay away. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's there's so, there are so many interesting unspoken rules that exist. Um, it's, it's really fascinating. Really fascinating. Everything that I know about, uh, uh, cycling comes from uh, the triplets of Belleville. <laughs> it's everything I, everything I know about cycling. And, and um, so nice Google. What's, what's probably coloring my opinion about cycling is the fact that the way cycling and cyclists are represented in that movie is by these disproportionately uh, endowed uh, men who spend so much of their time going <gasps> with that face, which was a really horrible face that I was making for those of you listening and not watching. <laughs> Do and it has know, an, excellent, an excellent soundtrack. As it well. has one of the best soundtracks of all time. Yes. Do we know what percent of our, our viewers are listeners and listeners are viewers? Uh, I know that our YouTube videos get very few hits and yeah. that we do get some downloads on iTunes and I don't know that I've looked at the Google play downloads and I don't think that I have a way of tracking people playing the podcast from the website, but I think that the iTunes downloads are greater than the YouTube watches. So 
yeah. But if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe so we can get a custom URL because having a URL that is <laughs> not slash binary jazz really sucks and need 10 subscribers, I think, to get a custom URL. So please just hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button, and then like go into your settings and say, don't ever notify me when a new episode comes out or don't. I mean, notifications are cool, but, but you don't have to. Just, just subscribe blindly and, and then walk away. That's, that's the minimum level of, of, of expectation for anyone watching on YouTube. That's right. That's where we set the bar here. Minimum level. Very, 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 very low. <laughs> Don't watch. Just hit subscribe and go away. And walk away. <laughs> Make yourself a sandwich. <laughs> do you subscribe to anything on you, any YouTube channels? Yes. Okay. I do. I do not. I, 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 I don't. I, I don't. Subscribe to Binary Jazz, Gary. Did you not just listen? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I kind of, I kind of glaze over when we start doing like the self promo stuff. I, I, there, there. I already a, heard the show. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> there's, there's I'm only kidding. a couple channels that I have notify me when there's new episodes. Um, one of them, the YouTuber basically doesn't record stuff anymore. He used to do a lot of stuff. It's Charlie McDonald, and he used to be a big thing. Um, made really regular, and I, he was funny. Um, but now he doesn't do stuff because he's making films, I guess. Um, the other one is JP Sears, who does, if you're not familiar with JP Sears, uh, it's Awaken with JP, and he does uh, videos that are, um, he does like um, kind of sort of self growth and self help type things, but he has a series of videos which are far more entertaining um, called uh, Awake, uh, which is where the Awaken with uh, JP stuff, it's, um, uh, ultra ultra spiritual uh, with JP, and and so he basically does satirical uh, things about like um, yoga culture and uh, health food type culture and just various things and and veganism and and gluten free and so all these things touch on like things that that relate to me directly and and he does a really good job of making fun of because obviously he's very deeply a part of all of these things. So he does a really good job of making fun of himself and those, and the sort of pomp around all of those various things and, and how seriously um, people often take those things and themselves. Yeah. I, I ask because I think like YouTube being, I mean, so, as, as old as it is, right. I think there was a point where I probably subscribed to <clears throat> channels and then, or feeds or whatever they're called. But recently, like I find one of my favorite um, things to watch is Everyday Astronaut on YouTube. Mm. Shocking to no one. Um, <laughs> but I feel like every three or four days, I'm like, oh, I wonder if there's a new episode. And I go and look, and there's a mechanism that would alert me that there are new episodes. And I don't know why I don't take advantage of that. It's yeah. silly. I, really, what am I doing here? Mostly, mostly these days, I, I subscribe to mm. channels um, that I end up watching uh, on our Apple TV so that it's easier to get to them and easier to see those things um, like, you know, recently uploaded from your subscriber subscriptions or whatever. Um, mostly I do it for that, not because I want to know specifically when those were uploaded, but because I want to have an easier way of accessing them when I do choose to watch them. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't really do the YouTube thing on my laptop, but on the Apple TV, when I can sit back on the couch and throw my feet up on the coffee table, right on. Yeah. Trying to think of things that I've subscribed to. I'm subscribed to Tiny Desk through NPR. So that's my a good route for new music for me. Um, what else? Coding Train, which used to be Coding Rainbow, but I think they had some sort of copyright issue. So now they're now they're infringing upon Dinosaur Train as opposed to infringing upon Reading Rainbow. A less powerful lawyer team, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, aren't they both uh, public broadcasting anyway? I think so. Because Dinosaur uh, Train was on, was on public television. I, I don't know if I've watched enough Dinosaur Train to like, to have a, have a strong opinion on it. Sometimes I'm really a fan. And then sometimes I'm like, man, they just, they, they're hopping all over. Like I need some continuity between <laughs> episodes. <laughs> the standalone. I, episodes aren't working out yeah it, yeah but i don't know if that's if that's because i didn't watch them in order or 
No, it doesn't matter. I'm not sure. The order doesn't matter. That's what I thought, but I, it feels like, I don't know. I mean, it just feels like we're, we're going all over the place. It's like, the, it's the I, si- I can't suspend disbelief and jump 30 million years while these dinosaurs are riding a train from episode to episode. Like, it's just not, that to me, it's the jumping time by millions of years that bothers me. It's not the dinosaurs on a train traveling through time. It's the, <laughs> so, it's the disconnect. Yeah. So, so if, if there is another means by which they travel through time, would it be, there, or is it the fact that they're dinosaurs and they're visiting other dinosaurs in completely different time periods? That's the, that's the problem. It's the dinosaurs visiting time, dinosaurs in other time periods. That's the problem. So if there are people right. visiting dinosaurs in different time periods, that would be okay? Right, because the, the route they return to, it feels like the route they return so, to is not stable. It feels like the route they return to is really like a nebulous time zone. Like, what is this magical well, place where probably. dinosaurs take a train from this nebulous place to other... And I guess that's, my objection is pretty accurate. silly to start with, because it's a... It's so you're so you're more okay traveling. you're more okay with the magic school bus episode when they went to various points in uh, prehistoric times to to see different uh, dinosaurs and and plant life and stuff you're more okay with that getting in a yeah. school bus and jumping through time to visit different prehistoric uh, time periods than but let's than but let's dinosaurs let's frame this, on a though. train. Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle has a track record of doing amazing things with this school bus. So, I mean, this is not just like a one-off, like, boom, day one, we're going to see dinosaurs, right? I mean, we've been inside the human body. We've been to Mars. We've been everywhere in outer space. We've been to the depths of the ocean, and now we're going to go see dinosaurs. She has a track record that, I, as a parent, like, I'm signing that field trip for him. Go to see dinosaurs. Cool. Have fun. You know? I'm, I'm not doing – I'm not – it, yes, that seems much more reasonable to me. Much more reasonable to me. I never really thought about the field trip forms and the first field trip uh, <laughs> that she had to bring to the table and be like, now hear me out. It's going to sound crazy. Fine. <laughs> I don't know, though. Like, she's, she's, she's not just doing, a crazy she's science not teacher, field, right? She's not doing field trip forms. I can guarantee. <laughs> I bet she is, and people are just like... You know, like, like the crazy teacher was, you know, art teacher or that weird science teacher. I think it was just like, okay, whatever. It's $4. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to feed my kid lunch? Like I just packed lunch that day. All right. Have whatever. <laughs> like, lunch. We went to Mars. Like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm not buying any of it. But these kids went to Mars. Man. <laughs> I'd want to be one of the, like, associate parents, the ones that get dragged along. Where they're like. Right. And then their kid is like kind of embarrassed, but then the parent is like super into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was never, a, yeah, there was never really a cool parent that was the uh, parent that went along, was there? It's all right. I've given up being cool. <laughs> Maybe I never was. Doesn't matter. Um, just, just, I don't want to like stray too far off the topic, just for my own like understanding. Is there anything else interesting about domestiques we should we should cover? <laughs> I need to know now. Is there anything interesting in the first place? Could be a good question. Now that I'm like, oh. well, I think interesting. I don't think caddies. I don't think caddies count because I think caddies. Well, I think domestiques are different because they're basically sacrificing any individual recognition for the recognition of someone else, and I don't think that's what a cat like. I don't think anybody thinks a caddy is doing that. I don't, I so, think they're providing advice and things. I don't know. I don't know much about golf. So, so are these, are these domestiques like also cycling on the course and like keeping pace with the leaders? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're, they're, so the team, they're legit team members, but they're just not going to get any recognition or heyday basically. They're the ones passing yeah. the water bottles, the bananas and snacks being in front and like blocking the wind <laughs> i i would i would prefer just for the the, the humor if we could say that they are breaking wind for the rest of the episode <laughs> they're in front breaking wind um <laughs> because i'm six apparently um i i think that yeah so i think teams are like 10 is that right allison do you know 10 riders i think it's 10 whatever it is good round there's, there's usually like 
you've got like the team lead who's either like in it for the general classification or is like a sprinter or climber. Some teams have someone that's in GC, but then also like a sprinter and or a climber. So domestique's role is to like prepare and protect that lead rider or riders, whichever the case may be, um, and and keep them, you know, in the in the uh, fold, uh, in the safe, fed, watered. It's like keeping a horse on a, on a cycle, you know? Right. And like they'll sacrifice, like, so they'll even sacrifice parts from their own bike. So if something goes wrong, they'll like give tires or wheels or whatever. And like, or entire bikes. Like, or entire bikes, yeah. Yeah, like your bikes, I don't know, like you, you caught a flat, right? We'll take mine and I'll wait here for the team car and replace the tire. I don't know. And also I thought what was interesting is that they've been doing it for as like early as the early 1900s that there have been people who have been doing this for for like their <clears throat> for their leaders or whatever which I was like I don't know it's interesting I it, it's it's amazing amazing to me too like they're and they're they're just I mean they're world class cyclists yeah who just have this you're right this like anonymous role in supporting these you know does anyone go on from being a domestique to being a lead writer was that a thing? Um, a few people have. I think, uh, what's his name? I think Chris Froome did. Uh, this is where my weird niche of knowledge is, <laughs> where I'm like, oh, well, these names that I've known. Um, I mean, Greg LeMond, I think, was a domestique for a few writers before he won the tour in the 80s. Um, so there is I, I think it's like a default a role before you kind of move up. Yeah. 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 I don't think that you, I think you have to be of a very rare skill set to be like day one, like the GC candidate on your team. I think that you kind of have to have I mean, that um, experience in stage racing before you're prepared to make a run at the whole thing. And like, because of, I mean, just like similar to world cup where it's like the athleticism and the age and people retire. So so early <laughs> age wise um and become announcers and whatnot it does leave room like wiggle room for people to be training i guess and be like the first in line to to being on like the leader of their team i guess but, hmm. but how do they decide like i don't know i just I, it's such a deliberate tactical decision that it just seems like a very weird thing to be like, oh, you're going to be involved in the Tour de France. Congratulations. But also, like, don't expect to win any of the days because you'll be sacrificing your athleticism for this guy. Well, uh, but domestiques often are, if, it, if there's a, um, a breakaway, like, sometimes when it's not drawn back in, I mean, those are the guys that win because they are pretty well, like, uh, he's not going to win the thing, so he can win today and, you yeah. know, gain a couple minutes. But long term, we know he's not going to win, so whatever. <laughs> throw him the so throw him the day because he's not going to win the whole thing yeah or like the or like the the wind shifted and we're not going to catch him but it's fine or like <laughs> it's hillier than we thought or whatever chris you really should check out like some of the um some of the mountain days like as they get to the top like the barriers fall out and so you have these individual riders with like the crowd right on top of them and the camera views are phenomenal because they have these guys on motorcycles just following leaders you're beaming the video up to like a blimp or a helicopter back down to Brock. It's like, it's, it's intense sporting. It's fantastic. The so best exciting. part about the mountain stages is that the Jersey is polka dotted. <laughs> um, and that's because a candy company used to sponsor. And it's very, I don't know. That's my favorite part. <laughs> so when you're king, when you're king of the mountains, you get the polka dot Jersey and that makes me very happy for some a Willy Wonka reason, I think. I, I do love that that the, the, the whole like uh, jersey presentation at the end of every stage and like the dude that starts in the jersey, you know, for each each uh, general class general classification and mountains and sprinters. It's it that is fun. That's a fun it's a fun event. Watch the Tour de France. I don't think we get very many other grand tours in the US on broadcast or easily. No. So, France is the only one I've seen. Uh oh, we've reached the countdown portion. We have, we have. We oh wow, I was totally distracted. You were. So we have except a for the intro, I feel right. Yeah. <laughs> we have a number of questions from Lisa. Uh, Yay! What's so? What's the number though? You uh, still have a number. The number of questions we have in the queue currently is five, ah. and they're they're all from Lisa, and it's not like she 
sent them all at the same time either. She, there is three that she did in quick succession and then she waited an hour and then she waited a day. And I find this, I don't know, this pattern very interesting for some reason. <laughs> like, oh, and another thing. <laughs> I like that because it's like some, some brainstorming and then some musing and simmering. Yep. Bring, bring in a bit more to the table. And then I think maybe after the fifth one, she's like, okay, I'm done. I need to be done because they're not going to get through all of these in the next episode, clearly. Um, so yeah, She's correct. Yes. So Four the minutes. first question, uh, the first question, uh, I don't know, it might be my favorite, actually, uh, mm -hmm. is what position would you play in Quidditch? Oh, interesting. <laughs> Um, for myself, I would love to be able to say um, that I would play Seeker um, because that is obviously like the coolest position and it's the one that has like the least connection to the game itself, but <laughs> it's just randomly some dude up in a, on a broomstick just looking for something completely unrelated to everything else that's happening in the game. Um, but sadly, my eyesight is such that that would never, ever happen. Um, so far more likely I would be like a beater, just like some dude hitting a, a, the, the ball and trying to knock people off their brooms. That was probably what I would end up being. I, I merely went for beater. Yeah. I was going to, I'm double checking. Are they called seekers? Is that the other, the just like, they're kind of just like the players that hang out. Like the, there's, the, the baseball field players. There's you... seeker, keeper, beater, and something. <laughs> this should have been the topic. Maybe what? A, a chaser? Chaser, a... chaser, yeah. Chaser, yeah. Yeah, chaser, think... chasers are the goal scorers, basically. Oh, I don't know if that's, that's, I mean, like, truth be told, I'm going to be on the sideline. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bench quit. I'm the second round third round quidditch player you're you're the you're the the field manager you're the yeah like i'm i'm the person that's like hauling the equipment for you and like you know giving you like some pep talks but i i'm probably not going to be called into the game unless several people have been injured been injured <laughs> that's that's fair which could happen in in, in the world of hogwarts so it's true it probably it's true. seems legit uh okay good uh next question uh if you were a plant what kind of plant would you be oh wow <laughs> this is a really good question um <laughs> i am not great with plants i appreciate them i appreciate the variety of them but i i couldn't like point it and say well that's a that's a plant i mean it's kind of like my <laughs> limit right there you know and I would be correct. It would be a plant. I mean, I would be pointing at like a motorcycle or something. It would definitely be a bush or a shrubbery. <laughs> some kind of like green, growy thing. A... Yeah, I definitely have that part on lockdown. Plants, not plants. Like that, <laughs> plant that's a you... thing I can do. Um, I, palm, some kind of palm. Queen Sego palm, maybe. Like okay. ground palm. I know snakes I... crawl in and stuff, but still they're beautiful. I've developed a serious affection for uh, various like cactus type desert plants um, partially because I live in a desert and I go to those places fairly frequently and um, there's some amazing thing there's uh, choyas are pretty awesome um, there's there's teddy bear choyas um, choyas are basically like they're they're cactuses and they have these these um, they grow out in these weird interesting ways um they have lots of, of spiny things and teddy bear choyas look like they're fuzzy um but they're not <laughs> because it's all it's purple. not fuzz yes yeah, yeah, it's not fuzz <laughs> it's spiky so like if you try to give I, a teddy bear choy a hug then you would get full of spikes and i kind of like that i think that that's probably what i would be <laughs> okay <laughs> We psychologically got a lot to dive into. Yeah, here. we won't. We we don't need to psychoanalyze that. We just need to hear what Allison's uh, plant would be. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. I think mine. I, I I air plant the ones that don't have roots. Oh yeah, yeah. That um, you kind of just like dip in water occasionally. Um, That's a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a thing. Huh. Yeah. I was really hoping one of you was going to say the word deciduous. Deci de de deciduous. A deciduous tree of some sort. I don't know what it means, but it's a plant thing. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> it's one of the one of the types of trees, like coniferous. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's what I should have brought to the table, not domestique. <laughs> yeah. Trees. <laughs> Tree <types. laughs> Trees. Trees. Oh. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.